crosses ethnic boundary. Or what do I speak? Emotion. Nobody taught you to laugh. Nobody taught you to cry. Somehow we know how to do it. Just as nobody taught us exactly what this depression thing is about and how to be depressed. Madam Toastmaster, my fellow executive members, fellow Toastmasters, and as I commonly like to wrap it up, family. That would include you invited guests. What is depression? Now, as Trinidadians, we have a common say. We are depressed. We are always depressed. We are depressed for everything. You're late for work, you're depressed. You are scolded, you are depressed. Something does not turn out the way you want it to. You are depressed. But is that accurate? Is that what depression is? And I put it to you today that it is not. It isn't. As is quite aptly named the theme of the day, words do have power. And how we use this word depression really does affect us. So it is my hope, as I present to you today, an explanation, or a general explanation rather, of this concept of depression, that we perhaps will use a different word. Because the word itself has power to it and can cause the very meaning of that word to occur in your life. So what is this word depression? What is it about? Well, we know what sadness is. We experience sadness every day. It's that downtrodden feeling, that feeling when you feel within yourself, you know, your head, you hang your head down, you assume a position of, of retreat. We know what sadness is. Now, some may say that depression is prolonged sadness, and I say to you that you're incorrect. That is not what depression is. Depression is way more than just a feeling of sadness. It is the concept of sadness that is psychological, that also carries with it the physical, and it exists on a consistent basis for a minimum of two weeks, be a minimum. And for us to declare it clinical depression, it needs to continuously exist for up to six months, minimum. When you explain it like that, when you explain that depression is not just sadness, but it is almost the total removal of all hope and emotions, it's the emptying of your emotional bank, for an extended, consistent period, then we would realize a lot of the time, if you miss a maxi and you feel sad, you're not depressed. If you are scolded and you feel bad about it, then you're not depressed. Because what categorizes depression is that it is consistent over a period. There's no let up. When you feel down about something, and it makes you feel sad, you know, you did, didn't do something the way you thought you should have, you feel sad about it. Then, then there's a time for that, you feel sad. But then over a period, you feel better about it. That transition from feeling sad to feeling better lets you know that then it's not depression. Depression is consistent. Now I'm gonna get into a little bit more detail about depression. For a long time we thought, that depression was the absence of serotonin. And now serotonin is a chemical in the brain, it's a neurochemical. It's just a big fancy word for saying this chemical that floats in the brain that the body produces. And we thought for a long time that neurochem that was absence of serotonin in the brain. We know now that it's not just that simple. Serotonin is a feel-good principle. It's that, it's that chemical that makes you feel good. When you achieve something, you feel good about it, that's serotonin. When you, when you 
you smoke marijuana or take drugs and you have that high, it's because that drug triggers your body to release more serotonin and it feels good about it. We naturally produce that. So we thought that the absence of that is what caused depression. Now while yes, that's, a, that's one of the causes and the aspects of what depression involves in the brain, there's a whole lot more that we're now beginning to tap in and research in Oxford and Stanford University says so much more about depression that we really need to look at. So now that I've given you a better concept of what depression is about and some of the chemicals responsible in the brain for depression and so on, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how we can deal with depression. That's the good part. The part about talking about depression was the sad part. I see some sullen faces. Now I'm going to tell you how we can deal with depression. Now yes, there are drugs that you can take, but I'm not going to deal with the drug. Because there are many different things that we can do to deal with depression outside of drugs. The first, the first best way to deal with depression, and I'm seeing some smiling faces, first best way to deal with depression is not what you think, it's actually exercise. That's the best way. It's exercise. Exercise actually causes the body to release more serotonin and dopamine which are chemicals that feel the principal chemicals as I said again. The second, of course, is exactly what you're thinking and the second is sex. Sex does the very same thing. There are, other, there are other things that also help release dopamine, things like food and chocolate and so on, that naturally cause your body to feel better. So before I close, I'll say this. Instead of calling depression upon yourself because words have power, stop, think, and maybe try some exercise. I thank you.